Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel for our weekly Bible study. I wish above all things that you are prospering and in good health, even as your soul prospers. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to focus on your wisdom and not our wisdom, because it's our wisdom that fails us daily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic for this week is some stumble at the cross. Some stumble at the cross, if not everybody. Our scripture is uh, found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. That reads, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, a crucified Messiah was a stumbling block to the Jews because they thought that the Messiah uh, should be a person on whom uh, God's blessings rested in the highest degree, as stated in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. That reads, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord shall rest upon him. After all, now, Jesus executioners hung him on a tree and that was sure proof that God had cursed him according to Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 23 and Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 13. Now, Paul stated in 1 Corinthians 1 and 23 that the crucified Christ is himself a stumbling block to the Jews who are offended that one who died on a cross on a tree, uh, such a, cur a cursed death should be called Lord and Christ. Now, stumbling block is something that causes someone to stumble or fall or make a misstep. And, and, and missteps in life can be dangerous and it can be deadly. Uh, the concept of stumbling blocks was especially suitable to a rocky land like Philistine, Palestine, where uh, stones and pebbles and are plentiful on all of the unpaved roads. The term uh, stumbling block occurs literally in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 14, which forbids the placing of stumbling blocks in the way of a blind person to uh, make a cruel joke of their, their helplessness. In other words, a person that can't see they're blind and you come along and put something in front of them just to trip them over, to play a joke on them, to have a big laugh. But now generally, the term uh, stumbling block is used figuratively of anything that causes someone to fall into unbelief or immorality. Now, uh, the first of three points uh, for our two focus verses that we're st uh, starting tonight is some stumble at the cross. Some stumble at the cross. This was the attitude of the Jews because their emphasis is on a miraculous sign and the cross appears to be a weakness to them. Jewish history is filled with the miraculous events from the Exodus uh, out of Egypt to the days of Elijah and Elijah. Uh, even Jesus was, uh, when, as he was ministering on earth, the Jews, Jewish leaders repeatedly asked him to perform a sign from heaven, but he always refused. The Jewish nations did not understand their own sacred scripture. They looked for a Messiah who would come like a mighty conqueror and defeat their enemies. He would then set up his kingdom and return the glory to Israel. The question of the apostles in Acts 1 and 6 shows uh, how strong uh, this hope was among the Jews when they 
ask Jesus, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? You're saying all of this about you going away. Well, if you're going away before you leave, at least restore the kingdom of, uh, 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 to Israel. At the same time, now their scribes noticed uh, in the Old Testament that the Messiah would suffer and die. Now, why have you forsaken me, uh, according to uh, Psalms 22, verses 1 through 8? I'm just going to read a few of them. Uh, th this uh, is the Old Testament rendering of Jesus' cry on Calvary, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, Psalms 22, verse 1 says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you don't answer. And by night, but I find no rest. And yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were put not put to shame. But I'm a, uh, I'm a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who seek, see me mock me. They make mouth at me and they wag their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delighted in him. Now, the passages uh, like uh, Psalms 22 and Isaiah 53 pointed towards a different kind of Messiah, and the scholars could not bring themselves uh, to bring these two verses, two chapters together uh, uh, that seemingly contradicted prophecy of the image of the Messiah. Isaiah 53 uh, verse 3 to 10, through 10 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. Hallelujah. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and in his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid upon him the iniquities of us all. And he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from pr judgment. And he was, who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich uh, in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. And verse 10 says, and yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seeds and he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now, they did not understand that their Messiah had to suffer and die before he could enter into his glory and that the future Masonic kingdom was to be, was, was to be preceded by the age of the church. Now, a few examples of, 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 of how uh, most of them during the time of Jesus' ministry, even after his crucifixion, did not understand what was taking place. 
Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 36, and I probably won't read all of those verses, but I'll read, uh, you, you know the story. Uh, uh, the road, uh, the men, two men on the road to Emmaus, verse 13 says, that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about the, all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. And then one of them named Cleophas uh, answered, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not uh, know the things that had happened there in these days? And verse 19 says, And he said to them, Jesus, what things? And they said to him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deeds and words before God and all the people and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, women of our company uh, amazed us they were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back saying they have, uh, that they had seen a vision of an angel who had said to them, he's alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see. And verse 25 and 26, and I'll finish with these two verses. And he, speaking of Jesus, said to them, O foolish ones, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And, 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 and then we, we, we go down to uh, the idea that it's because the Jews were looking for power and great glory that they stumbled at the perceived weakness of the cross. They, that how could anybody put faith in an unemployed carpenter from Nazareth uh, who died the shameful death of a com common criminal? Both the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, 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 is the power of God unto salvation. Romans 1 and 16 and 17 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God uh, is the, uh, for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first, and then also to the Greeks. Verse 17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. We're talking about the some stumbled at the cross. Now, rather than a testimony of weakness, the cross is a tremendous instrument of power. After all, the weakness of God in the cross is stronger than men's power, as stated in 1 Corinthians 1 and 25. And this is the New Living Translation. It says, this foolish plan of God is wiser than, than the wisest of men of or human plan. And God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. We, we just as the Jews, can easily find ourselves seeing Jesus as a stumbling block when he's not presented by God in the way that we are looking for him to come into our lives. Just because we act pious and self-righteous does not mean that Jesus has to act that way. Just because we find importance in how we dress does not mean that Jesus has to wear a certain outfit to save us. 
when we really think about it, Jesus is the opposite of our imagination. Mark, for instance, presents him as uh, a suffering servant. John chapter 13, verse 3 through 9 says, Jesus knew that the Father had given him the authority over everything that he had uh, come from God and would go or uh, return to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robe, wrapped a towel around him, and poured water in a basin, and then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. And when Jesus came to Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested. You will never wash my feet. But Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. And Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands, my head as well. Wash me all over, Lord, not just my feet. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased in Matthew. Now, if God is pleased with his son, whether he's suffering or whether he's ruling, then we ought to be pleased with him. On the Mount of Transfiguration, where Moses showed up representing the law and Elijah showed up representing the prophecy, and there is Jesus in the midst of them representing the fulfillment of the law and of the prophecy. When you, when you think about it, Jesus died in a sinner's place and he was buried in a sinner's tomb and then he rose a conquering savior. Second Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He became what we were, so that we could become the righteousness of God as he is. But to some... He's a stumbling block. What a pity. To some, he's a stumbling block, even to this day. That's it for me tonight. Uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we end this study, we ask that you would help us not to be a stumbling block to anyone or cause anyone to stumble in any way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. We pray that uh, these little words, uh, this Bible study that I shared with you will help you in some way to uh, look at Jesus in a different light as we live life, as we do life, that we will see him better and then it would be easier for us to be more like him. So until next Thursday or Sunday morning or whenever, take care. And I love you and God loves you. And I pray that you will be safe, that you would mask up, that you will practice uh, distancing yourself in public and that you will uh, practice sanitary uh, washing of your hands. Uh, until then, take care. Bye-bye.